social, it brings up the social. And let's say we type in form, it brings that up. And so we can search, you know, automatically, and it's gonna search without a, a button press. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions, and today I wanted to go over UX and UI of search boxes. So I put together a nice little list here. Uh, we're gonna look at other search boxes like Google, Bing, Amazon, see what the professionals do, and then we're gonna create one ourselves in Power Apps. So first thing I've noticed is that every search box uses a magnifying glass. Uh, every search box that I see, every good one uses a magnifying glass. So we wanna use a magnifying glass. Uh, we can use a placeholder text. So this says like search here. So it's like the behind the search box text. Um, provide a button. In Power Apps, you know, we wanna provide a button. We could use two different buttons if we wanted, if we wanted to search different types, um, but that's not really necessary. Search icon position. So this is the magnifying glass. Like, do you want it on the right side or do you want it on the left side? It depends on if we're doing Bing or Google. They, they move that magnifying glass around. Um, then we have use wide search boxes. So if someone were to type in a lot, you know, it's not gonna hide behind the text. We'll be able to see everything that they write. Um, don't hide search boxes behind a menu. So don't click a button and let the search box drop out. We want search boxes to be simple, everyone to know where they are. You know, adding an extra click is a big deal to some people. Um, don't overload with too many advanced features. Uh, I guess that would be like, um, maybe a little bit like Amazon after you get into the advanced features of search. Um, I mean, maybe you want to have that, but we don't want our search box to be confusing. Uh, drop down to search all or specific. Uh, this was what I saw on Amazon. If you think about Amazon, you can search all of Amazon or you can search like a type. So you can search furniture or house or computers. Uh, that's, that's something I saw. And then keep it simple. I know that everyone always says this. Keep it simple works with everything. You know, people want simple. We don't want to struggle when we search. If you struggle when we search, people aren't going to want to use your app. So let's kind of take a look at some different search boxes. So if we take a look at Google here, you'll notice that it's right in the center and the magnifying glass is on the left side. So Google is very simple, you know, and this is probably the number one search box in the world. It has rounded corners. When you click on, uh, hover over it, it highlights. Uh, it has two buttons. So like I said, we want one or two buttons. So you can Google search or I'm feeling lucky. I'm not sure how many people use that. I've never seen that it actually changes to I'm feeling funnier and everything. They added a little technique there. If we look at Bing, you kind of see it's kind of offset on the left side. I guess if we zoom in, maybe it kind of centers itself. Um, but Bing, the magnifying glass is on the right side. Uh, it's got rounded corners. Uh, there's a little bit more design um, than Google. Google is the simplest so far. If we go to Amazon, you notice that, you know, you have the text box here in the top center. You have a button click in orange. Uh, looks like they have an orange border around the whole entire thing. Um, and then you have your types on the left side. You know, you can search for, you know, clothing or computers and electronics or all departments. And then finally, let's look at Yahoo, right? So Yahoo has it in the top center once again. It's on a button click with a magnifying glass. Uh, you notice there's a lot more uh, confusion here in Yahoo, and maybe that's why people don't use Yahoo as much. You know, you have ads here at the top. You know, obviously Yahoo is trying to collect their revenue, and they have the news already right here on the first page. So the simplest and most used search is actually Google. Let's get into Power Apps. So I have a Power App here, and this is just a SharePoint list, and I made a nice little gallery. I added a couple text boxes at the top, and we have a uh, event name, type, address, and date. And none of this data is real. I just kind of made some data up. So first thing we want to do to do a text uh, search box is add a text input, right? So I'm going to do just like everyone else does. We want the search box in the top center, right? Why, why do we want to be different? Do we want it on the left side like uh, SharePoint used to be? You know, they had a little search box over here on the left. And now if you notice the new modern UI, they move the search box to the top center. So most search boxes are in the top center. 
And what you're going to want to do is remove that text input and then the hint text. So this is that text behind it. So you can type in search here. I wonder if hint text is on the left side. Let's see. Again, oh yeah, hint text. So we'll just change it to search. So now when we play, you'll see that we have search here. If we decide to type, search disappears. So you could put search, you know, whatever you'd like. You could put search event, right? We could do search event name if we wanted to let the user know, you know, it's more specific. But that's using that behind the, the text box uh, hint text. That's what you want to use. Now, what we want to do is be just like everyone else, right? I understand we may think we're the most brilliant Power Apps people, but there's people at Google, Bing, Microsoft. These people have been doing this for years. So why are we going to be any different? So let's create an icon, and it's going to be a magnifying glass, right? So let's see if we can find that. I know it exists. It should be near the top. There it is. Search. And I'm going to fill it in with a white and then give it a background color. And maybe, we, do we want to be like Amazon? I'm not sure. Maybe we'll give it an orange, kind of like Amazon. And I'm sure we could add a little border here. And I'm going to remove the border from my text box here because I want it to be, a, I want it to kind of be seamless. So I'll give it a two. There we go. So now we have a search box. It's centered and both of our borders are matching. It's square. So you see, and we have a, a nice little button here. So already we're doing, you know, tons of things correct. We're, we're making search really simple. Now, depending on if you're searching SharePoint, SQL, the Dataverse, your, your search is going to be different, right? Um, with SQL, you can actually use, and I believe the Dataverse too, you can actually use the search command. If we were in SQL, which I'm not, you can do a search and you're not going to run into delegation issues. But with SharePoint, you will run into delegation issues. And I mean, you could customize this more if you wanted, uh, maybe do a type. But for my circumstances, so what I'm going to do on the on select is I'm going to create a variable. And this variable is going to be behind the scenes for our data source. So the variable is going to be update context and we'll just make it simple variable search. So that's the name of our variable. And what it's going to do is it's going to filter our events and it's only going to filter them if it starts with. So the reason we're doing starts with is because this is SharePoint. If we were doing um, Dataverse or SQL, I would recommend using search instead. And it's going to start with our event name. And that is going to be based off our text input one dot text. And let's see if we can get our parentheses and brackets correct. There we go. So I have two parentheses, a bracket, and then another parentheses. So that is all behind a variable called var search. So on my data source, my items in my gallery, I'm going to replace it with var search, right? And it's blank right now because it doesn't know what's behind var search. So now that I have clicked the button, it has populated var search. So what we're going to do is on our screen one, since we're using a context variable, we're going to click on our screen one on the left side here. Make sure oh, that's as big as I can get it. On visible, on visible of this screen, we're going to update context. Var search to our events. That's my SharePoint list. Uh, our var search is now events. So when this screen appears, it's going to populate the search. But now, if we were to come in here and type in, let's say, Independence Day, and we search, you can see now we're searching. Uh, what we would like. What I want to do is add like a little X here that clears out our search. So I'm going to go to icons. I'm going to get this cancel button. And I'm going to put it right here. Nice and small like. Alright. So now that I have that in a nice position. 
So this X button, what it's going to do is it's going to update context and it's going to do the same thing as on uh, on visible var screen. Var search, we want it to be our entire list. All right, so let's say I come into search, I type in SharePoint, and this is for SharePoint Saturday. I search, it brings up SharePoint Saturday. I click the X, it cleans it all out. Oh, so on our X, what do we want to do? We want to reset this text box too. We're going to reset text box or uh, text input one. So now when I click the X, it clears out the search box. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little bit like, uh, I would say, like Amazon. I'm gonna add that drop down in here. So input drop down. We're gonna add a little drop down just like we're Amazon. And so our options are going to be there's a few ways we can do this, but I'm going to make it simple. I mean, if you want to make this based on your choice field, you can do that. But I'm just going to manually do it. It's going to be all outdoors town hall social vacation. All right, so now I have my types in here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the variable here. So we're going to say if, so this is my, my icon here. So if drop down one that selected dot value equals all, then we want this else update context. This is our variable again. Var search filter events event type equals drop down one dot selected dot value and then we're going to do a second criteria which is going to be our starts with event name text input one dot text all right, that all looks correct. So pretty much if it's all, it's gonna search all of the uh, options. If we select something in the dropdown, it's only gonna search that event type. So let's go ahead and try it out. So let's do town hall. And if we search with it blank, it brings up the only social. It brings up the social. And let's say we type in form it brings that up and then so let's change it to vacation form because we know form success is not a vacation type it should be blank and so now it's blank if we go back to all search it'll bring up form success we clear it out and now clears out our data so this is a search box that's very similar to Amazon uh, pretty much we have our behind the scenes text here we have all with uh, different types that we can populate and we have our search box, our search icon. Now, I just wanted to show one more way to search because I also like this way. So let's say we have a text input, right? And this one, I'm going to make the border blank and a search in the hint text and nothing here. Now you notice that it's blank. and I've seen this one before too. And we can draw a line. So let's go to icons, shapes, a rectangle. I want a little tiny line. And I want it to extend across. And the height is one. So here's another way that I've seen search is just it's a line all right so we have another search box here and I've done this one before so I would say you use the top search box for many different options like Amazon but this bottom search box it's not gonna have a button it's just gonna automatically search 
once we start typing. So how do we do that? In our gallery, instead of the data source being a variable, we're just going to search the events and the text input. So on our items, we're just going to change it to filter events if it starts with, and we're going to say text input to. So now there's no button press, and I would say use this type of search box if you have you know a very small data set, uh, not a lot of choices, and so we can search you know automatically and it's going to search without a, a button press. I would say use this for, you know, maybe a smaller data set. Maybe you like this version better, but you never hit the search box. You just have a blank search with space and uh, you leave in the hint text and maybe we change it to, you know, search event name just to be more specific. So people know that you can search here. And you would set the icon to view so you can't click on it. But you just search right in and it's going to search right away instead of doing the button click. I do think the Amazon version is for large data sets. If you have a small data set, uh, this would be okay. You know, give yourself different options. Um, you know, who knows how to do it perfectly? I, I mean, maybe Google's perfect, uh, but there's, there's other ways to do it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful uh, doing search UX UI. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe. I'm going to keep making videos. Uh, it, it seems to be working. Uh, so thank you guys. Thank you everybody who has already subscribed. I'm almost to 500 subscribers. I'm getting there. Thank you.